Hey, welcome to Vortex Garage. We're working on our 1983 Jaguar XJ6, doing a major service, and well, we've already replaced a whole bunch of the old belts. Now we're coming to the time where we need to tension them. Now, if you've had the uh, luck of working on more modern vehicles, you've certainly experienced the set it and forget it nature of automatic spring-loaded tensioners on serpentine belts these days. But it wasn't always that way. Back in the day, you actually had different adjustment mechanisms from cars and you actually had to tighten these V-belts very specifically. In fact, the service manual actually specifies the exact amount of deflection based on the amount of pressure that you should have when you're testing the tension of this belt. Now, the old adage used to say, oh, well, if it's got about a half inch deflection, then you've probably got it right. Well, that's not always the case. Now, if you have the belt too loose, you're gonna end up having slippage on the pulleys. That can make squealing belts. It can heat the belt up and cause it to fail prematurely. But if you over tighten the belt, you can actually have other problems over the course of a long time. If you've got a lot of tension on the belt here, just imagine the pulling pressure you're putting and imagine a shaft with a bearing on the end of it, getting that pressure wanting to pull it over. You're actually putting a lot of additional stress on those bearings and you can wear components out a lot faster. So today we're gonna to show you some tips and tricks on how to tighten V-belts properly using specs found in the service manual. So we're gonna take a look at our JAG here and we're going to do the alternator belt first and that's the one we're gonna show you. Now there is a basic premise when it comes to V-belt tightening that you wanna look at the span of the belt. That's from the middle of one pulley to the other, that's the span. And take that measurement in inches and divide it by 64. And that's usually the rule of thumb for V-belts. Now you'll still wanna check with your service manual because with JAG it's slightly different than that, uh, but it is awfully close. Let's show you on the car. All right, so the first thing we're gonna to wanna to do is measure our belt span. Now this is one of my favorite tools in the shop. This is a sewing kit. Uh, measuring tape and it's got both centimeters and inches on it and the thing I like about this is you can, can contour it to various things so it's really nice and easy to use. All right so what we'll do is we'll come up past all of our stuff that we've put up here our wires for our cameras and uh, hopefully one of these cameras is going to pick up the view here so we're going to put this right around on the end, middle of that pulley and then uh, we're going to go here. It looks like we have somewhere between eight and a half and nine inches of span if we go to the center, probably closer to nine inches. All right, so if we take the nine inches and we divide it by 64, we come to 0 0.14 inches. If we do 8.5 inches, then that comes out to 0.133 inches. And uh, well, our spec is actually 0.15 inches of deflection is what JAG is calling for. So our rule of thumb here got us awfully close. Now the only issue is, is that we don't necessarily know how much force is required for that. There should be lookup tables you can find on the internet, but we don't need those because we've actually got the specification directly from our JAG service manual. And what JAG tells us in the service manual is that with 3.2 pounds of force, we should be deflecting the belt 0.15 inches. So. The question is, how do we know that we're putting 3.2 pounds of force? I know if I just push anything the slightest bit, I'm probably pushing 200 pounds, right? You know, how am I going to come down to 3.2, right? Well, sarcasm aside, I think that we can all admit it's hard for us to know when we're applying exactly 3.2 pounds of force. So there's a tool for that. That's where this comes into play. This is a belt tension gauge. We'll link to this in the video description. So we'll show some close-ups of this gauge to kind of show you how it works. And let's talk through it super quick here. Basically, you've got two O-rings on this gauge and two scales. On the small shaft here, you've got a small O-ring. This is the force gauge. As you're pressing in, this is spring-loaded and the O-ring will stick and it'll record how much pressure you were putting. This O-ring you set to the depth or the deflection. So we've got this one set at about 0.15. 0.15 is about 5.30 seconds um, if you do the math. An eighth of an inch is like 0.125 and 3 sixteenths of an inch is uh, 0.1875. So uh, right there about 5.30 seconds is about close to this. And uh, we've gone ahead and measured that with another measuring tape and we've set our O-ring. So what we will need to do is get a frame of reference. What we're gonna do is put that on there right in the center and we're gonna push and deflect it. So we do need a frame of reference so that we can get it right to that spot. Now you can eyeball a frame of reference, don't move your head and you should get it close enough. 
or you can use something like a piece of string uh, that you string across and use that. So we're gonna try to do that and uh, we'll take this measurement and we'll see how close we are. Now, before we take our measurement, there's a couple things to point out. How are we gonna set our tension? Well, JAG uses these adjustable uh, arms that sit on a trunnion. This is the trunnion right here. And no, a trunnion is not a turnip flavored funion. It's actually a uh, kind of a pass through thing and they use them on suspensions back in the day as alternatives to ball joints. But the important thing here is there are two nuts on this threaded shaft here. You wanna basically loosen this one And I do, uh, off, they often call in the book to loosen the trunnion nut just so that there's some flex here if you need it. Uh, let's go ahead and do that. I think that's the five eighths. No, must be a nine sixteenths then. It is a nine sixteenths, look at that. So we'll just loosen that slightly uh, just because it called it out in the book. But you want to loosen this one. This is basically a lock nut, which we'll put on when we're done, but we're going to loosen it off quite a bit. And it's nice. We can get our ratcheting wrench on that one. This one, however, we're going to have to do by hand with the, the wrench. And what we're going to do as we tighten it, just imagine as you're tightening it, you're pushing the nut further down, which is basically sending the rod this way. And as we send the rod this way, our pulleys are gonna get further apart. As they get further apart, that's gonna add tension to our uh, belt here. Now I can feel we've already got a fair amount of tension. So I've already kind of set it by hand to get it somewhat close. We use sort of the half inch deflection thing as a gauge just to get us there. And then we know we can sort of fine tune the rest. Now, how do you set this? Well, once you've loosened all your trunnions and you loosen the, uh, everything up, and this here, this whole thing, the whole alternator basically pivots back and forth and it rotates like that and you can set it. You can also take a small pry bar and you can come in here and you can basically push against this and you can move the whole alternator the way that you want it to go and hold it in place and tighten this nut up so that it holds and then you get your base tension set. And then basically all we're doing from here is fine tuning it. All right, so we're going to take a piece of string, which of course we don't have. So we are going to use, whoops, this little piece of wire here. And uh, we're going to tape this up. You just want to be able to pull this tight enough. The important thing is you want this wire to be on the same plane as the uh, the belt and that can be a little difficult to get it in there so we're we're close enough it's pretty much right there if you look at it the right way the camera angles might not be perfect for that all right then we're going to take our tool and we're going to zero it out on our small o-ring and we've got this here so let's go ahead and fish it in here Get it right in the center. And then we'll get it to match the plane and that's about right there. Okay, and then when I check, according to that, I'm actually a little high. I'm about five pounds of pressure. This is our 10 right here. I know that's kind of hard to see with all the light and everything. So let's try one more time. And uh, this one is in a kind of a wacky position, but you're gonna have to deal with that no matter where you are. Okay, I'll get it in here. Get it right in the center. That's about right in the center. And that's about matching it. I think that's a better, <laughs> I am pretty much spot on. If you look at that, that's about three. We could probably go a tiny bit tighter. So after you take your set, your measurement, if you need to, you can simply loosen this and tighten this one. 
and that'll, that'll pull it back in and that'll loosen the tension. Or you can tighten this one to add a little more tension if you need to. So we'll do that. It's about right there is about our distance. And I would say we're right at about 3.2, maybe a tiny bit more. Um, but I think that we're not overly tight and I think we're close enough and I'm pretty confident and happy with that tension. So this one actually we had pretty close, which is good. We'll uh, try to bring the cameras along as we do one above the engine. Uh, this one is accessible from under the vehicle. So we were handling it while we're down here. We'll try to bring you along for one more and show you, and maybe we'll loosen the tension a little more and show you a little closer. It is interesting that we got so lucky that doesn't normally happen on camera. All right, so now that we're comfortable with this one and how the tension is, we can go ahead and lock this up. Okay, and then we'll lock this one up. That one's pretty locked. All right, we'll basically lock these in place. Okay, and then let's go ahead and tighten our trunnion. And we'll take one more measurement, make sure nothing went too far out of whack. We'll reset our O-ring. Our other O-ring's looking pretty good. We've still got our plane measurement. We'll put it right in the center. And then we'll test right to about there. And uh, yeah, we're still looking pretty good. So, all right, that one is tensioned correctly. I'm gonna... All right, so next up, we're gonna go ahead and do the belt to the power steering pump. Now, according to the JAG specs, 6.4 pounds of pressure should deflect the belt in the center by 0.17 inches. That's a lot closer to the 3 16 mark. And uh, we can reset our gauge here. We've moved our one O-ring to account for that 0.02 extra deflection, so not much. And uh, we've got our O-ring reset to zero. We're looking for 6.4, so past the half mark on our 10 scale. We've also moved our blue wire and we've kind of got it lined up with the plane as best we can. And we'll have that as a visual reference. And uh, well, let's check it out now because this one, I can tell you right off the bat, yeah, look at all that deflection. And we didn't even move the gauge. So this is a good example of one that's gonna need some tightening. So we do have our one nut here backed off. Let me get some light for you. All right, and then we're gonna come in here. Now that we've got this one backed off, we can tighten this one quite a bit. And of course, there is not much room here. So I hope my GoPro doesn't get in the way. I might use a stubby wrench. Let me get a stubby. Sometimes I like to show on camera that things are incredibly difficult to reach and some tips on how to reach them. I think in this particular case, it's our own doing by having cameras stuck everywhere, including the GoPro that is in the way. And I probably should have done this before putting all of these uh, wires and belts and hoses back on. But our GoPro is definitely one of the items that's in the way. But not so bad with our stubby wrench. We can get in here just fine. All right, let's, let's test that and see where we're at. Okay, we've reset our gauge. It's hard to see our plane exactly. But we're about there. And, uh, well, that didn't move us very much. That was only about a pound. So I don't know if you can see that. Try to put it here. So that moved it, but just a little bit. So we, we're on the right path, but we do need some more tension. All right, let's try that. Okay, we're making 
making our life a little bit difficult with this wire. We're not quite level with it. So I'm gonna double check it. There we go. That that should help us. That should help us. Now that we're getting closer, I want to make sure I dial it in pretty much perfect. That's pretty darn good. Let's take a look at that. It's probably hard in the light. Let me turn this off, see if the uh, light's better to show you the scale. I think it's impossible on this GoPro. You can kind of see it there, and it's a little bit distorted. I'm going to take one more test. I want to ensure that I'm lining it up here. And actually, I can take a, it's another straight edge if I really want to be perfect. And put it like that. Until we start to hit our O-ring. All right, that should be about right. Yeah, that's about right. So I'm pretty happy with that. We've got enough deflection. We've matched this up well. We can take this off and then we can tighten up our trunnions and bolts and all that good stuff. All right, that's nice and tight already. And then we can just come in and tighten these. Tighten up our trunnion. All right, trunnion's tight. All right. There we go, we're all set. Now the Jag has a total of four V-belts. It has one for the power steering pump, one for the alternator, one that goes to the air conditioning compressor, and one that goes to the air pump. So we'll post specs to all those, but we just wanted to show you the basics on how to do it on these two belts. All right, so hopefully you found this video insightful and how with V-belts, it is a little more complicated to set belt tension, but in all reality, it's not hard to get it exactly right using the right tool and looking in your service manual. So all in all, it didn't take us very long to do each of these belts and we'll go ahead and wrap up the other two and we'll be good to go on this car. Like I said, certainly quite a bit different than just the set it and forget it serpentine belt with an auto tensioner, but once you see how to do it, it's really not that bad. All right, so we're gonna to continue to be sharing videos from our 1983 Jaguar XJ6 project. We're getting close to the end of our major service, so we'll have a big video for that and some payoff stuff after that. In the meantime, if you like what you see, do us a favor, drop us a like and a subscribe because we'll certainly have more for you here on Vortex Garage.